Hello YouTube. Uh, here we have an unboxing of the Tronxy X3 3D printer. Uh, I purchased this on Gearbest. I'll put a link in the uh, description section below. Uh, I couldn't find any information, any reviews or unboxings online. Uh, so I chose to do an unboxing myself. As well as later on I'll do a build video and a review video of the printer uh, once it's up and running. Uh, the price I, the price on the printer, I got it on sale, I think it was 200 US uh, with maybe $32 US shipping. Uh, the build area is supposed to be 220 by 220 by 300 millimeter tall. It comes with a heated bed, it's all aluminum frame and uh, electronics and the power supplier and an external assembly in enclosure. So let's get to it. Shipping was through DHL. Shipping time was pretty impressive. I ordered it uh, the Monday evening and the week before and it arrived the following Monday. Okay, first layer. We have our power supply. Yeah. With loose screws already. How impressive is that? How unimpressive is that? Four loose screws, one stuck inside. There we go. Hmm. Starting off to a rocky start. So the power supply is only 20 amp, 250 watts. So I'd be a little concerned about this powering the unit and the heated bed. I think maybe 30 watts or 30 amps, 360 watts would be a more suitable for this type of printer. Let's fix these while they're in here. We got some PVC pipe. We got a couple of screwdrivers here. We'll use one right away to fix these loose screws. It might be underpowered. They're also dented. This the power supply. We have a couple of screwdrivers, some uh, mixed hardware, some screws, nothing labeled there, just all thrown into a bag together like that. That should be fun. Looks like every screw and washer and spring and bushing for the printer are all in this one bag. So nothing, uh, nothing identifiable. We'll see how that works out when I go to put it together. We have some uh, have a micro SD card with a little flash drive adapter, 8 gigabytes. That's always nice. We have various uh, X keys. Next, we got a plug in cable. We got some belt and some uh, uh, wire covering. We have a uh, on off switch power connector. I'm sure inside here there's a little fuse. That should pop. So a little fuse, what is this, looks like a 6 amp, so 6 amp on the 110 would be more than enough for 20 on a 250 DC. Okay, let's take this piece out here, we have some acrylics, we have a piece of material for our bed, our bed is a, a it's an MK3 bed. That's not too, that's nice. So that's your aluminum plate and your heat bed all in one. So that's not too bad. We got some uh, some blue tape, or whatever this is, to put on it. I'll probably end up getting a piece of glass for this anyway. So that's that. That aside, we have some acrylic here. 
Um, this is nice. I wasn't expecting this. Um, these pieces look like they're for, I think these are for a spool holder. And they got the Tronxy name written in the side. Now this is an all aluminum uh, 3D printer. The acrylic pieces in here are for the spool holder as well as the, ex the separate enclosure for all of the electronics that is, sits beside the printer. So we got some acrylic for spool holder. Very like this will be the back of uh, the enclosure for the power for the power supply, the electronics, the LCD screen. All those things are being contained within here. But the printer itself is all aluminum. There is no acrylic on the printer itself. I don't know why this was removed. Well, all the this is fairly beefy too. This is pretty thick acrylic. I don't know if you can make that out, but that's like better than a quarter inch. Your standard uh, uh, Prusa I3 would run about something that thick, but look at that. I think this is for underneath the heated bed, this piece right here. It's pretty heavy duty. And the rest of these components here are for the external enclosure for the electronics. It's got the Tronxy name written in it. I don't know why the, this piece, these pieces of acrylic are missing a protective covering on one side. It's unusual. And then the perforated bottom of the enclosure for airflow. Okay, so those are, that's our enclosure case. Now, we get down to the meat of it. Okay, so here we have the printer itself. The components for the printer itself, we have uh, um, all our motors come with all the uh, the bearings and the gears and the couplers all pre-installed. And they're not, uh, unlike the i3 that has the tiny little motors, these are all 42 millimeter motors, so they're all pretty beefy. Uh, the extruder motor, that could be beefier, but the other, other than that, all the other motors are pretty beefy for what they are. Um, one thing I'm, I don't know if I'm going to like about this printer is it's got a, uh, a, a Nelsy board instead of a ramps and uh, there's not a lot of, like I don't know how much upgradability there is on this. Right, maybe we got a micro SD card slot there but I don't know how, how that'll work. I don't know how much upgradability, I know see we only have room for one uh, extruder on this printer so if I wanted to go dual extruder or dual color I'm not going to be able to do that but that's not my intent for this printer anyways that's I leave that to my my deltas so if this has it does for anybody concerned it does have an, an Nelsy board it doesn't come with uh, ramps or an Arduino but that said I can go online, I could buy a ramps board and Arduino knockoff for about $12 total combined. And I could change change everything around if the enclosure would, will support it. Let's get this back in here. Okay, there's our board. Here's our LCD with... Uh, the front of the closure panel already mounted. Five switches, screen, the uh, contrast adjustment is right there. One connector on this because we don't have SD card control on this. We're going to be relying on uh, the Nelsy board for SD card, from printing from the SD card. So, again, I don't know why. Uh, all the acrylic is missing protection on one side. That's that's weird. Okay, so we got our five motors, five uh, stepper motors. We got another bag of parts here, unlabeled. So that'll be a guessing game there as well. We got heavy-duty roller wheels here, angle brackets in there. We got a bag of those. We got a bag of uh, angle brackets for our 2020 framing. We got another bag, we got, uh, what is this, this is the extruder assembly, we got some more angle brackets, 
We have some bearings. Some. So what's neat about this is some of these parts are already assembled. Like here's here's our hot end. Our whole hot end is completely assembled and already wired. So that's pretty cool. It's all metal shroud, all metal back piece. So there's no plastic in this. And uh, if I look inside there, it's hard to see, but uh, it's got a all brushed. Uh, it's got a brush finished aluminum heat sink on the extruder. It's all red brushed aluminum. It's very tiny. So if I ever have to replace the um, one thing I will add, and there are hole mounts here on the side if you see that. Uh, if you want to add a uh, cooling fan to cool the uh, filament as it's coming out. So all metal. We have some angle brackets here, four angle brackets. And I'm not sure what this is. It, actually, you know what this is? This is the, these are the two fittings that are going to go on our uh, threaded rod. And these are going to go sit on our gantry. And these are going to control our gantry movement with our threaded rod. These are threaded inside, so already pre-assembled. So one last thing for me to worry about. These parts here are 3D printed. The, the two, only two 3D printed parts in the whole kit. And besides the piece under the bed, the only two parts on the act. And we have our 2020 aluminum extrusion. nine pieces of aluminum, uh, 2020 aluminum extrusion for our frame. And we'll see how that goes together in our build video. Get back in there. We have our wiring for our stepper motors. We have the cable for our LCD to our main board. USB cable. We have, okay, so some more acrylic here, and they're already pre-installed our, uh, the wiring as well as, uh, these are pretty neat, these little, uh, these end stop switches, they got little rollers on them, and they're already pre-assembled on the acrylic pieces that go on the printer. Um, I don't know what the red wiring here is for, or the black, I think it's extra wiring for, that is extra wiring to wire up the power supply to the switch on the back of the ex external case. And then we got some various acrylic parts here, small acrylic parts. Okay, so that's my unboxing video for the Tronxy uh, X3 3D printer. Uh, you can find it on Gearbest as well as uh, AliExpress. Uh, I did find a deal, uh, I did get a better deal on Gearbest, the printer was on flash sale uh, but generally uh, it's pretty much similar price on both sites uh, I wasn't interested in a generic i3 uh, I'm not interested in all that all acrylic frame of the weak little motors just the look of it the general look of it the, the cabling all on the outside the electrical on the outside uh, the the circuit, circuit board all on the outside. I'd have to print extra cases and whatnot. I'd have to do a lot of extra work to make that thing look clean. I'm just really not interested in one of those. And for the same price, I was able to get this. And it has a bit of, bigger print area as well. And it comes with a much uh, better uh, MK3 bed instead of an MK2 bed. And the difference between the two beds is an MK2 bed, he, heated bed, you'd still need to provide your own aluminum plate or glass plate to go with it. While the MK3 bed has the aluminum plate incorporated into it. So there's no there's no need for anything extra. It's all in one. Uh, I still probably will put a glass bed on it. We'll see how level it is, how flat the bed is. Um, but I'm probably still going to put a piece of glass on there. Maybe a piece of mirror. Um, I did like the uh, fact that it came with a enclosure already for all the electronics externally, and all the wiring was neatly done. 
and uh, the build size was much better than an i3 as well. With an i3, you're looking at about 200 by 200, maybe 220 by 220. You're pushing it. Then you get a height about 185 to 200 at most on those. With this printer, I'm looking at 220 by 220 with a height of 300. So I got a much bigger build area. I got a bigger build area on one of these printers than one of my Casso Minis, which have a, a, a height of 300 and a diameter of 160 to 180. So, and the heated bed will be a big, big bonus on this. But I'm really concerned with this 230 watt power supply. I'm really, that's a little bit of a disappointment that. Uh, 250 watts, sorry, uh, 20 amp. Uh, usually with my experience, if I'm going to get a heated bed, 3D printer with a heated bed, I get one of these at 30 amp, running 360, so that I can run all my components and the heated bed. So, we'll have to see. We'll see what that does. I usually don't print an ABS, um, but if I start and i got to run the heated bed up to 110, then I'll probably be concerned. But anyway, that's my unboxing of, as I said, the Tronxy X3 3D printer. Uh, I hope it was informative. And uh, stay tuned for the build video.